Hello and welcome back to another round of XCOM 2, saving your disaster campaign. This time with the Advent Lockdown. We're going to start directly in a mission. Uh, the last time we looked for a UFO that has been shut down and we're directly engaging it. Took the only soldiers that were available and uh, we now have uh, landed essentially a haunt our reaper will hopefully run through this mission and lead us to uh, victory for those of you who are interested we have 13 enemies according to the shadow chamber and the first ones are already starting over there interesting starting position here we at least got some high ground might as well take advantage of that As for the rest, uh, let's take a somewhat compact formation and go forward. So the idea is up um, to kind of find the right positioning for us overall. The timer doesn't start until we engage with the first pack. So we do have some time on our side. No need to rush through this. Ooh, okay, well, that's the next pack. Elite Spectre, Archon. That almost looks like two packs, to be honest. I go what I'm needed. So we do have three out here. Three, that's six, eight. So only two more packs after these guys. Sniper goes uh, into position. Heading out. Orders confirmed. Moving out. Let's all watch in case we're triggering right away. That seems to be not the case, so for now we're fine. Yeah, I would say we're going for an entire overwatch. I just want to see what the pack is doing. Uh, hopefully it's continuing to, to patrol. Because it has us pinned pretty much right there this here seems to be remote startable might as well give it a try and there's a hole right here interesting entrance I don't think that I've seen oh yeah because it's a landed UFO well that makes sense Yeah, let's stand over here. Can't believe that they are not moving at all. It's typical case of the AI being stubborn. Because they have pinned us down and thus they refuse to leave, even though we're completely concealed and it actually shouldn't be a problem. Nope they continue uh, staying there let's see can we remote start we could but they are not in range okay fair enough my life is in your hands let's wait until those guys can be remote started because unfortunately 
Well, that's one out of two. Still better than none, I guess. Remote start will not reveal us. That's the great part about it. So might as well just start it. And not start the timer. It's just 12 bonus damage. Good. Everyone else on Overwatch for now, because we're still pinned down. Stupid AI behavior. I could write a book about it. Uh, the AI now thinks uh, they are super smarty pants for just standing there and essentially waiting. Good, back to our Reaper over here. Spectre wouldn't be completely killed. That's unfortunate. Don't want to waste uh, the sting yet. And also don't want to waste um, the claymore yet. You know what? I think one claymore is not the end of the world. We still have another one. And it's only 13 enemies, so I think I can afford that. The reason why I'm being so thick-headed about those two guys is... We can get that elite specter essentially off the plate before anything happens. That would be awesome. We haven't started the timer. We'll remove a 25-40 hit points-ish unit. Well, it must be more than that. We already dealt 25 point, uh, 20 points of damage. It's probably more than 25 hit points. Hello, reposition. There we go. Spectre down. And we are in a comfortable spot. Good. Time to reload. Taking one more overwatch and next turn we're going to pull. Oh, you seriously positioned yourself in a way that the MP bomb will not hit both mechanical units, really? Great. Gotta applaud the AI for its absolute precision when it comes to effing you. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Time for us to deal with the enemies. Now oh, that's not enough damage. Where is the other blue screen rounds? I think it was here, right? Yeah, 
that is correct. We would be hit by Overwatch, uh, so might as well just take a normal shot, of course. That one time where you could have actually used a high accuracy. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yep. Uh, that would need to be eleven points of damage. So we're taking the safe route. Didn't want to be discovered. Very nice. It's a pretty, pretty solid hit. And let's make sure that we uh, kill him. Good, eight protocol for the half cover. And let's just get out of range so that we're not a target. So the only targets now aren't full cover, which should not be a problem. Turrets that are not on top of them, uh, something have a really bad aim. We just picked up an outbound signal coming from the UFO. It's some kind of distress beacon. You need to get inside that ship and shut down the signal before they send their whole fleet after us. There we go. Nice little setup. Fook says I am to obey. Moving up and killing the super heavy turret. Moving up mainly to make sure that we're keeping up with the distress beacon timing. Double movement across the board. We knew that we were not pulling anything. There is a sector pod somewhere here, so we got to be careful. We're missing line of sight, unfortunately. Moving up. We know there is a, a group inside, so we got to be a bit careful. Order confirmed. On the move. Very nice. Very nice. Moving into half cover. Grenade is unfortunately too far away. Not really great odds to hit this guy, but we did it anyways. Good job. Sorry. 
wait a second we can explode in here and oh there's an explosion uh barrel right next to the target holy shit that's a bad that's a bad setup and of course the sector port And a couple of mutants that can be set up. If I was able to place it a bit further to the inside, could kill both of them. This may or may not take away the cover. Well, it took away the cover, but also the line of sight. We're going to long watch and hope that the mutant is running into our uh, line of sight. There we go. Come on, kill this guy. You got this. Uh, you do not have that. And here is where a good strategy plan might end. Two more turns. Okay. Luckily, we have not been revealed. Unfortunately, we got a reload. But luckily, we had an autoloader. There we go. Mutant down. Very nice. Don't want to get too close because I already know. that there is a sector port. Good. Grenade. This should not explode the thing. Plus, I believe we have already exploded it, so per definition, that should not be able to explode again. We know that there is another pack back there. Re uh, research time of the current tech is reduced by 50%. Since we only have about like half a day of research left. Mm -mm. So we're going to go for income. This here is literally useless. It would be perfect if we would have started um, our research of plated armor. Good. Let's think that through. We killed two here, three with a turret, three inside, that's six, two here, that's eight. Eight. Yeah. So that's a pack of five. Moving back, mainly because I, we, we need to reload and I don't want to be hit by the psionic bomb. Back in. 
And we also don't want to trigger anything. Well, that explains uh, the last two. Tower probably didn't count. Luckily, they don't know about our sniper or they deliberately chose to ignore him. Got a lot of agency out of that position. Barely not good enough to um, remove the cover there. I'm trusting you. So we got plenty of grenades. Might as well use some of them, for instance, for cover removal. There we go, pretty nice. Let's make sure we get the other Spectre. Well, might as well take the shot. No hair trigger. Eighty percent shot missed. That is unfortunate. We almost completely wiped both of them. Good, we got two remote start objects right there. Commander. Yeah, I'm not going to take any chances here. Moving out. Closing on target position now. All right, moving back. We're reloading, and it's just going to be a good old-fashioned Overwatch trap. With the sector port here, I'm inclined to say that that might be the better position. So giving up high ground and instead repositioning. Might as well move up to here next turn. Yeah, I didn't get it. Well, thankfully we got that great Overwatch trap, which now turns out that everyone shoots it if they're at the state fair and have uh, their first timer with a gun. Yep, of course, you gotta miss that sector pod. It's hard to miss, I, I indeed would say that it is pretty hard to miss the sector pod.
would really love to blow this uh, these things here to smithereens. Reload. Just out of curiosity, like how much damage are we talking about? Regular explosion here, five points of damage. Five points of damage. Okay. I think this here could be the right play. This would kill all three of them together with a grenade. Or at least two of them. How much damage would we deal here? It's 30. Not enough to kill him. Ten more from the um, EMP grenade. Sixty percent chance to hit him from here. Problem is, if I'm miscalculating this, our Reaper would be toast. I really don't like the odds of that. Got an A protocol, that's fine. Got a nice little EMP bomb over here. Moving just into a nicer location, really. If that would stun him, we don't have any other uh, mechanical units anyways. If this here is going to stun him and we don't need to prepare anything because armor is, doesn't matter against EMP grenades. So if it would have stunned him, I definitely would have uh, gone on with the plan that I thought about, which is just exploding everything in here. Problem is, it is not necessarily safe to do that. The alternative is to move to here, into full cover and start hammering on the sector pod. This is an interesting setup because we could kill multiples, but I need to be safe. You always gotta have a plan B, and if the plan B is just not going to realize. Gotta be realistic then. It's nice to see how much damage we can deal with. Banish, blue screen rounds and shredding. It's exactly what we wanted to see. This could kill a sector pod. I see that's exactly uh, what I meant. Minimum damage and or anything that's not going according to plan. Good. 
Yep, let's confirm this. Seventy eight per cent, that is good. How about giving an aid protocol to ourselves actually? Let's kill the sector port first. Yeah, five points of damage is not going to cut it. Heading there now. We're definitely going to get charged by the Sun Monster. And for whatever reason, there was a line of sight impairment. So I took the safe damage and used the explosive containers to our advantage. Probably going to see another shield. Yep, that was very likely going to happen. Shoots into full cover. All right, so far so good. Uh, shoots into full cover as well. No overwatch. Okay, cool. Let's start with our sniper. Only 50% chance. 60% uh, chance. Let's try it anyways. We killed him regardless because he is bleeding to death. The only problem that I do have is we do have an overwatch here. And I ho was hoping that I wouldn't need to trigger it. I'm on the move. Unbelievable. Yeah, I don't want to trigger the overwatch really. This guy is going to die. I'm almost inclined to make it way worse for them by killing this guy and taking away their tar- Are you kidding me? Okay. Understood. Moving out. Okay, see at the end I needed to trigger the overwatch regardless. I'm probably going to pay for it, yes, because of course the Overwatch is the only one that truly hits. I was absolutely clear why I wouldn't want to trigger it. I am on the move. 
yeah, sometimes you're you're trying all of the right things, but it just does not work out. Uh, the sometimes uh, it is too heavily stacked against you. This guy is not even a hundred percent certain kill. I go what I needed. The trap is set. Might look wasteful, but I am absolutely fed up with um, the Overwatch here. That was some next level bullshit. Shields are removed. Reloading and we're going to take a 100% kill on the zombie because we do have an advanced repeater. Healing our wounds. I don't want any casualties on this mission. Let's reload and we're going to take a flank next turn. Okay. Well, not the cleanest mission, I will tell you that much. Finish that clown. That. Unfortunately, I don't want to be flanked. It's really sad to see how this here is not going to how, how this is just not working out. <laughs> Lots of 50-50s. I know that I can't kill him. It's disappointing. Overwatching. I will reposition. Enemy is still up. 
And we might even lose someone. Oh, this is such a bullshit fight. Yeah, come on. Well, we're bleeding out. It's not lost, so we got three more turns to go. But I gotta say, it irks me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the game is is now adding insult to injury. Absolutely. Moving into full cover. Another high percentage chance missed. I'm definitely going to start shooting this guy next turn. This is so running out of hand. I'm not even doing much wrong, to be honest. Feels like every single one of them starts to turn into a zombie. We're missing a lot of our shots. Not all, but a lot of our shots. And just everything seems to be going not according to plan. To this here might be just the next episode. Close. Way closer than I um, would be comfortable with. Granted, the second part, uh, on, and specifically the last firefight, was not particularly my best X coming ever. Um, but there is only so much you can do if you're running out of steam and resources. I had no more grenades left over, and people were just not hitting. And normally, if if you're in a tough spot, you either try to go for a flank, remove cover, or outplay the enemy by just superior positioning. All of that was not possible. Instead, we got some really massive wounds. Anyways, Revival Protocol is finally on board. Good job. We got some shredding. And... Squatty here finally gets some Blade Master action. Overall, I would say decent. Definitely not good, but the rewards are fine. Look at that. Ellen Lois 130. Elarium finally got 200 supplies on top of it. Shit ton of corpses. It meant to be difficult, and that's why it was labeled very difficult. We're getting thin on manpower, Commander. We should check with Resistance HQ for new recruits. Good, everyone is. Yeah, why not? Go for a bond. Everyone is in the Met uh, Bay at this point. 
let's maybe take a look at what it, what we can do with the money because we do have 200 something funds and we got to be clever about how we spend it so first of all weapon upgrades 154 shotguns uh, 225 and 350 for plasma rifles do we have that many plasma rifles we actually do have quite a few that's 50 alarium 25 and 15 that's only 30 alarium 50 and 25 that's 75 alarium and 500 supplies I think we could do that just barely shotgun and normal plasma rifle but we wanted to keep alarium also yeah reduce contact costs please Yeah, we wanted to get uh, keep some alarium so that we can research plated armor. This will prove to be an important step forward. Hell weave armor is nice. Vector rifles plus one damage. Um, gotta bring it to you. Uh, although that is a nice breakthrough. At this point, I am looking to stabilize the entire run. So powered armor it is. And that's all we need to focus on for now. Eventually get some more alarium, um, some more alarium crystals at the black market. I also have an intel problem. Okay, one thing at a time. First of all, let's fix our weapons because that has highest priority. Do we have additional alarium that we can buy? Okay. Let's do that and never look back. Then next up, let's get the supplies. We got to get the, those upgrades. The Intel is fine, but we're not running out of time yet. There is still, there is still hope. Good. By looking into the armory, I think we've everyone covered. Heinrich here is yet another grenadier. It's generally not bad to have a few grenadiers, to be honest. Good, let's move on. So first things first, we gotta definitely get our upgrades. Our our project makes a bit of progress. Yep, I figured that that would be the case. Now in terms of engineering, let's build some items, weapon upgrade, plasma rifle for the entire SWAT. That's great. Storm gun, that's also good. And now we're short on supplies, but essentially we could even get the pistol upgrade. Gotta probably save some for the armor upgrade as well. Although I think we have too little alarium to actually do that. Let's continue with reducing uh, the um, contact cost. I think by now we might even be okay. Um, do we still have? No, we don't have. We don't have the um, Intel doubling uh, dark event, so. We should not have a problem making contact here. This here is worth 40 intel at this point. Don't need to take 40 intel to be honest. Might as well be better off to scan for intel. That will be a faster way of actually getting intel. So we're skipping 
we're skipping this. Good, we got a flamethrower, which nah, is not really a great weapon, let's be honest. I was hoping for a shredder cannon or a really nice large rocket. Continuing to look for another one. And there is the ambush. Well, the good news is we will get some experience out of it. Um, bad news is it is an ambush. Um, yeah, I, I think it's an easy mission, so might as well uh, take it. I don't think that I will record it because you've seen ambush missions 15 times. I'll just um, move through it quickly and start the next episode outside of uh, the ambush mission. For now, let's end episode number four, it is, I think, um, of the Saving the Disaster campaign. We're uh, f a bit far away from stabilizing this one. Definitely, it will be stabilized when one of the Chosen is down and when he has a team of colonels to, uh, to use. For the time being, he only has, like, one colonel and a few others so i'm really looking for more uh, rewards and maybe hiring some more hero classes so that we get to that level um if you enjoyed what you've seen feel free to leave a comment and a like uh, down below and see you in the next episode bye bye